Hi everyone, Toby Horrorboy here, and welcome back to another animatronic project. Today we're making Plush Trap from Five Nights at Freddy's. We're using a for real cubby, the Curious Bear, as a base. This was suggested by Abby on TikTok, and he is near perfect for Plush Trap. One of the most important things about Plush Trap is that most of the time he sits with his legs dangling off a chair. And every animatronic I'd found that was kind of the right shape wasn't able to sit like that. So everyone say thank you to Abby for telling me about Cubby. Now the first thing we do with any animatronic project is skin him, and I have a whole video for that on my channel. Once he's skinned, we can open him up to see how his insides work. I was mostly interested to see how he'd been put together to see if I could reposition his legs to be under his body, but it seemed very delicate in there and everything looked very deliberately placed. No space had been wasted and I didn't want to break anything so I just closed him right back up. I always like to do the eyes really early on just to get them done and out of the way. Now Cubby has sculpted on eyelids or eyelashes and Plush Trap definitely doesn't have those. I mean he has eyelids but not like that. So we start by sanding them off with our rotary tool. Paint doesn't like sticking to smooth plastic surfaces so while we're here we can sand down the whole eye to get it ready for painting. The eyelash piece left a bit of a gap once removed so we're gonna fill that with foam clay. Foam clay is a super lightweight clay that becomes foam when it dries. I love working with it so much and we can just put it straight on. It does, however, take a while to dry, so in the meantime, we're gonna go work on the head shape. Cubby's head casing has a few major differences from plush traps, and we can't fix all of them. But we can at least get it as close as possible. The most obvious one is that plush trap has a big mouth full of horrifying teeth, and Cubby just has a normal baby bear mouth. To fix this, I'm marking out where we're gonna cut to separate his upper and lower jaw. We'll cut it a bit later, I really wanna get those eyes painted first. Cubby's nose is so cute, but it's just not quite right and it's in the wrong spot, so it has to go. I really carefully melted the plastic holding it on with a hot knife and then pulled it off with some bone scissors and pliers. His head is a bit too wide. I don't wanna mess with the plastic casing too much because the more I take away, the more delicate it'll become. So we're gonna sand down the widest point just a tiny bit and we're gonna come back to this soon. Now we can sand down the foam clay on the eyes. We want the eye to be as smooth as possible, so we're applying three coats of watered down mod Podge to give us a better surface to work with. Then we can paint our eyes white. Honestly, I'm not great at painting or making things symmetrical, so eyes are always kind of a nightmare for me. I penciled in where I want the eyes to be and I did my best to have them both looking in the same direction. First I painted on the limbal ring, which is a thin black circle around the iris. Then I used a Posca paint pen for the pupil because I have shaky shaky hands. Then I just painted on a few different greys until the eyes looked vaguely like eyes and touched up the pupils. I should note here that Plush Trap has a few different models because he's been in different games. His eyes are much more detailed in FNAF AR, so that's what I'm doing here because I want them to be visually interesting. To make them look kind of old and dirty, I did a black wash and wiped off the excess with paper towel. He's gonna look so moldy and gross by the time we're done with him that his eyes can't be pristine. Once we're happy with the eyes, we do a coat of Mod Podge to seal the paint. Now is a great time to give Plush Trap some eyelids. To make a pattern, we're covering his eye with Glad Wrap and putting duct tape on top of it. We can then draw out the exact shape we want our eyelid to be and that can get cut out of fleece. Plush Trap is made from two colors of fleece, so this is meant to be our darker secondary color. And this fleece is really far off from the color it's supposed to be, so we'll fix that ourselves. I'm taking fabric paint and lightly dappling it onto the eyelids to make them a darker brown. It's important to do this after the pieces are cut out so you can get the edges of the fabric as well. I don't want this to be a solid color, I want it to look patchy and discolored and I promise that that will make sense at the end. Once they've dried we can take some super glue and glue them onto our eyes. And we then repeat the same process with the lower eyelids. And and unfortunately here, I made a terrible mistake. For all of the animatronics that I've customized, I've never actually damaged one before. But while I was working on his eyelids, the touch sensor on his head came off. I tried to solder it back on, but couldn't. My partner tried to solder it back on, and I thought that he might have gotten it, but it still didn't work. So I feel awful about it, but I did finally mess up and make an animatronic less functional. The good news is that he's still very interactive without the head touch sensor, and he still does every motion just fine without it. It just means that now if you pat his head, he won't respond. It was bound to happen eventually, but I'm not happy Happy about it. Now let's get back to fixing that head shape. No part of plush trap is meant to be neat, but we mark where to cut for our lower jaw so that it doesn't end up wonky and use the cutting disc on our rotary tool to remove the excess plastic. Then we do the same for Cubby's mouth. This is going to be part of our endoskeleton. His endo mouth is meant to sit really far back in his head, so we need to cut down as much as we can while still having this mechanism work. Plush trap's eye sockets are also pretty messed up, so we can draw out where we want those to
to be as well. Because the edges are so messy, I actually chose to melt them rather than cut them. And I did that using a hot knife, which is just a tool that gets really, really hot. It leaves a fun texture on the plastic that I really like for stuff like this. I used it when I did the eyes and mouth on the Venom nightlight that I made with my friend Joey, and it worked really well there too. So we melt down the edge of the jaw and then melt off the plastic around the eye sockets until we're happy with how it looks. Before we put the head casing back on, we need to paint the plastic for the inner mechanisms. Any given FNAF endoskeleton is silver, and Cubby's is currently cream and brown. Not very threatening. We're gonna cover up all the important bits with glad wrap and tape to protect them, and then spray paint him silver. I don't have a setup to film outside, so you guys don't get to see that. Sorry. But we use a grey primer, silver paint, and then a clear gloss. Now we can screw his head casing back on, and he's looking absolutely haunted. Plush Trap's head is kind of an oval, so we're gonna fix that sharp curve on the sides. We cut our pieces out of EVA foam and use contact cement to glue them together. There's six pieces on each side of his head and we can glue those straight on. And of course, Plush Trap gets protective glad wrap over his face so he doesn't get foam dust in his eye sockets. To start shaping them, I'm cutting them down with a craft knife so my rotary tool doesn't have to do all the work. It might not look like a huge difference, but that little bit of foam definitely helped with the shape. While we're here, Plush Trap's muzzle is a fair bit bigger than Cubby's. We can build it up with EVA and craft foam and then sand it down until we're happy with the shape. Now Cubby's legs are far too short. Let's cut them off. This was really time consuming because I don't have a saw. Maybe I should get one just for things like this. I started out using the cutting disc on the rotary tool, but didn't get very far. Then I swapped to the hot knife and started melting his feet off in sections. We want to keep the very top part of the leg so it can swivel, but the rest needs to go so we can add our own. I also sanded it down just to smooth out any rough bits. Looking at him, I realized that his jaw shape wasn't right and decided to continue his mouth further back into his head. We burned out his mouth, careful to avoid any wires. And now it's time to give him back his legs. The pattern is the same shape as the bottom of his current legs and we're gonna cut that out of EVA foam. We glue our pieces together and then glue them on. I also added some foam to the original legs to blend them in. And then we can sand them down to round them out. I'll admit, this next bit was kind of foul of me. I found this super Posable doll for four dollars at an op shop months ago and I bought her to harvest her joints. She was too good at posing to leave behind. I didn't know what she'd be used for but apparently the answer was plush trap because here we are. Don't worry she's not like a five hundred dollar ball jointed doll. She just looks a lot like one at a glance. I'm in the BJD hobby I promise I wouldn't cut one up for an animatronic. I've seen similar dolls in two dollar shops and she has a button on her chest that lights up and makes noise so she's probably more of a toy anyway. We're after her knees so we cut her legs off to get to them. I'm sure we'll use the rest of her joints for another project. We drill and cut a hole the size of the doll's knees in his upper legs and then we can start painting the knees. And this was a whole saga. Basically, the silver paint I'd used on the endoskeleton didn't like the knee joints. No matter how long I waited, it wasn't drying and I tried everything. I promise I know how to paint plastic. I sanded them down and tried using three different primers before I finally got it. And each time it failed, I had to remove the paint and sand the knees back down. So between the drying time and all of that messing around, painting these took three days. During that, I also hacked up some old bionicle joints to use those instead, and the paint didn't like them either. And I know some of you guys will hate that, but I saved them from the rubbish bin, and that means that they're fine for me to cut up. Those are the rules, that is how it works. I'll use those for a later project too. We don't waste good joints here. Anyway, the paint was the issue, so I painted them with some Tamiya paint, and it went on perfectly. Then I did a black wash so they'd look kind of old and more like actual metal, and did a clear coat outside. Once they were finally done, I shortened them a bit with the hot knife. Those those knees took so long that I made the legs while waiting for paint to dry. So backtracking a bit, the lower legs are also just EVA foam pieces cut out and glued together. And then we sand them to round them out. We take a knife and carve out where the knee joint is gonna sit. Because of how the paint reacted to the knees, I tried to score them with the hot knife so the glue would have something to grip. Now we take our super glue and attach our legs together. And it's time to start on the paws. His paws are such a weird shape, but we pattern them and cut them out of EVA foam. Each paw is five pieces of foam that we glue together with contact cement and then sand into shape. One of the things I love about working with foam is that if you take too much off you can just patch it with another piece. It's all getting covered anyway so only you guys will ever know. To work out the pattern for the fabric we're using glad wrap and duct tape again. This is a method used by a lot of fursuit makers and honestly where would we be without them? This is so much easier than any other method I've ever tried. The paws are kind of a complicated shape due to how tall the sides are. The bottom of the paw is all one piece but we've divided the top into three pieces. We can pin those down and cut out two of each 
each piece. I know that this looks like it's completely the wrong colour, but I haven't managed to find a good spring trap or plush trap fleece. At least not one that has reasonable shipping to Australia. And when I say reasonable, I just mean that the shipping itself isn't more than the entire cost of the rest of the project. So we're gonna use this fleece, but make it look horrible and disgusting at the very end. It's also not a bright primary yellow, and it's a bit darker in person than it shows on the camera. Anyway, we machine sew up our top seams. I also marked where the leg is gonna attach to the paw, so we can cut that area out for later. Now we can pin the top and bottom pieces to the paw and ladder stitch them up. A ladder stitch is great for when something needs to be hand sewn and you want your stitches to be almost invisible. We love a good ladder stitch here. I'm not gonna show this every time I do it, so I'll explain it here. Every single time I sew a seam, I go back in with a pin and fluff up the fleece around it to help disguise it. I've also started using a dog brush for this. Because it hides the seams, it makes your work look so much cleaner. And it's extra important if you're working with fur. Once our paws are covered in fabric, we can put them aside to look at our jaw. Our lower jaw is a single piece of EVA foam that we pattern and cut out. We want it to have some dimension, so we use a heat gun to heat form it. And now we're gonna use the rotary tool to sand it down. The back of the foam is textured, and we need to remove that so it doesn't show through the fleece. I cut it in a bit too far at the back, so we're adding in a piece of foam so it sits closer to his neck. We also need to give him the roof of his mouth so we have somewhere to put his teeth. I burned out the last of the obstructions using the hot knife. And then my partner came in and asked me to super glue his Otosaku Nendroids drink into its cup so it didn't get lost, so we did that too. Now we can cut the pieces we need out of EVA foam. The front muzzle section is also hollow, so we'll put some foam for the teeth in there as well. Our teeth are going to be made from barbecue skewers. We can take the back of one of our skewers and press it into the foam to mark where our teeth are going to be. Then we can take the rotary tool with a drill bit in it and drill out the teeth holes, making sure they go all the way through. We glue the mouth roof pieces in with contact cement. Because the sides of his head are uneven, we use the hot knife to mimic this on the inside of the mouth so they match. We really need the endo mouth mechanism to be as small and unobtrusive as possible, so I'm just breaking off that last piece. And speaking of the endo mouth, let's make that now. We're using one millimeter thick craft foam as well as a five millimeter high density EVA foam for this. And we cut both of those out. The craft foam is the backing piece and the high density foam is the border of the mouth. We sand down the border piece to get it as smooth as possible and then heat seal it with the heat gun. Then we mark out where we want our teeth to sit with a skewer. And this is a bit finicky because the teeth are almost the same diameter as the foam piece. There's really no room for error here. Then we take a smaller drill bit on the rotary tool and drill in our holes. This time we're not going all the way through because the outer edge is going to be visible and we want it to look neat. We glue our two mouthpieces together with contact cement and then tidy up the edges with our rotary tool. Now we heat seal it again for good measure. I tested it on the animatronic to see how it looked, but it wasn't sitting at the right angle. To fix this, we're going to attach a foam wedge piece to the back. As I was sealing it with a few coats of Mod Podge to get it ready for painting, I noticed a small hole. I'd accidentally drilled too far when doing one of the teeth holes, but thankfully, this is a pretty easy fix. I used a very small amount of foam clay to fill in the gap. Once it was dry, I sanded it down and brushed on a few coats of Mod Podge. Now we can paint the endo mouth, and I'm going straight for the good silver paint this time. Then we do a black wash to darken it and give it some more dimension. And we can find finally look at the actual teeth. There are a few steps to this because each tooth has to be individually hand painted. First we spray paint them white because that's the easiest way to do a flat colour. Then we dry brush on some silver to give them a metallic look and some green to make them look corroded. They're a bit too bright so we do a black wash to darken them up. And then we dry brush on more silver. With our teeth painted we can cut them all down with the rotary tool. His main teeth are going to be made the same way but they'll be a fair bit longer. We can then super glue them in one by one. So it isn't just flat, we also heat form the endo mouth. They're still a bit too plain for my liking, so my awesome housemate Joey lent me two colours of paint to add some more rust. And those are also getting brushed onto the rest of the endo mouth. We're not quite done here, but we're putting it aside for now. The endo mouth is going to be one of the last pieces we attach. The next thing we're going to do is get our mouth backing ready. Because of how much we've had to mess with Cubby's jaw shape, there's going to be a big gap at the back of his mouth, and we don't want that. To fix this, we're going to cut out a backing piece from some black four-way stretch fabric. The idea is that this is going to get cut down and glued into his lower jaw, so only a very small part of it will actually be visible. But without it, you'd be able to see Cubby's neck through Plush Trap's open mouth. We sand down the very back of his inner lower mouth and use contact cement to glue our fabric in place. It gets glued to the sides and center of his neck. We're not gluing it all the way around because his neck needs to be able to move. We chose a stretch fabric so that his head movement isn't restricted. It looks ridiculous, but we'll come back to it later when our lower jaw is ready to go on. Let's tape it out of the way for now and have a look at his arms. Most FNAF animatronics have a really distinctive segmented limb shape and it's time to give that to Cubby. Thankfully, I have some thin strips of foam packaging that we 
can use for this. We cut them down and glue them on with contact cement. Now plush trap isn't in good condition, so we need to rough up the edges of the foam. We mark where we want the damage to come to and sand the foam down with the rotary tool. Before we can go any further, we need to paint his joints. This is meant to be his endoskeleton, so we paint it silver. His midsection also has the endoskeleton showing, but I don't have a lot of the Tamiya paint left and I don't want to waste it on such a big area. So to protect the rest of him, we tape him into two rubbish bags and then he's off to get spray painted outside. We do a grey primer and a silver spray paint and then he can come back inside to be freed from the bags. Of course, the silver is too shiny so we darken it up with a black wash. Apparently I didn't film it, but we also painted the edges of the foam silver and that is such an important step. Now we can Mod Podge it to seal it in and protect the paint. My partner suggested that I could make his muzzle a bit bigger and he's absolutely right. We glue on a piece of craft foam and sand it down to blend it in and that's definitely looking more proportionate. It's finally time to give him some skin. I kept as much of his original skin as I could to help with patterning. We've changed the shape of his head too much for that piece to be useful, but the torso piece is near perfect. Please look at how horrific this is. Let's do the torso fabric first. To make the pattern, we're using his existing fur and pinning scrap fabric to it. The important thing to note here is that we have to make the upper and lower torso separately because plush trap is split horizontally. The switch that controls which mode he's in was also exposed and I'm gonna cover that because we can just operate it through the fabric. I did a mock-up using our scrap fabric just to make sure everything fit together properly. If I use the bare minimum amount of fleece, we might get another animatronic out of it. Maybe we could do Golden Freddy or someone else. Once we've got our pattern figured out, we can pin it to the fleece. We'll start with the upper torso. We cut it out including seam allowance, making sure that any visible edges are cut to look kind of messed up. We pin the front and back of the upper torso on and ladder stitch up the side seams. Then we can do the same for the shoulder seams. Now we can work on the bottom half of his torso. We cut it out and ladder stitch up the side seams. And now we do the under seam that connects the front and back pieces. The silver paint on his middle doesn't go low enough so we paint some more on now. Cubby's battery pack is on his lower back and we need to be able to access that so we can change his batteries. The original toy used Velcro for this, and that's what we're gonna do too. We hand sew it on using a running stitch. I promise that the stitches on the good side of the fabric are much smaller than what's visible on the Velcro side. Now that his torso is covered, we can give him his tummy patch. We cut it out of our darker fleece and dapple on our brown fabric paint to match the color of the eyelids. Then we pin it into place and sew it on using a running stitch. And we cut down the edge a bit to mess it up. Now that our torso is done, we can super glue it on to secure it. We do this for the middle of his torso as well as his armholes, and that'll ensure that it doesn't shift or move around. Before we can work on his lower jaw, I want to get his upper arms done and out of the way. We're using a similar technique to how we patterned the eyelids. We put glad wrap around his upper arm and cover it in tape. We're using clear tape this time so we can see the weathering on the foam underneath. This will allow us to cut the fabric to match it exactly. Because each arm segment has different wear, they have to be done individually. We draw out our pattern, cut it off, and then cut away the excess. Now we can pin it to our fabric and cut it out. We machine sew them because we can and slide the upper arm covers into place. Then we glue them down with our super glue. You can see the edges of the foam poking out, which is why they need to be silver. Okay, with that done, it's mouth and teeth time. I accidentally drilled a couple of holes too many in the roof of his mouth, so we're gonna fill those with foam clay. While we're waiting for that to dry, we mark where we want our teeth to sit on the lower jaw. We can then take the rotary tool and drill out the holes, being careful not to drill through the foam. The inside of the mouth needs to be painted, so we do a few coats of Mod Podge to prime it. Now we paint the upper and lower inner mouth black before sealing the paint in with Mod Podge. Please take a moment to look at my awful, awful spray painting setup. We paint the teeth the same way we did the endo teeth. They get spray painted white and then we dry brush on some silver. We do a black wash and then dry brush on our various rust and corrosion colors. And then we put the teeth aside. Before we can do anything else with them, we need to cover the head in fabric. To pattern this, we're using the glad wrap and duct tape method again. It looks extra bad this time. Poor plush trap. If I were him, I'd be so mad about being covered in duct tape. We mark out the edges for the mouth and eyes as well as the center front and back. We cut our pattern off his head and cut it out of our fleece. We don't want to see him running down the center of his head if we can avoid it, so I cut out both pieces on the fold. Now we can pin it to his head and start to ladder stitch it up. I started with the two side seams before doing the top of his head. I probably could have made the muzzle be a separate piece, but I did not do that. He does have a seam on either side though, so we sew those up as well. Now we can sew his head to the back of his neck. We trim down his eye hole fabric to more closely match the plastic head casing underneath, and then we super glue his eye holes into place. What an awful sentence. We also trim down the fabric around his upper jaw and glue that into place as well. He looks suspiciously like withered Chica, but he's fine 
finally starting to come together. We cut out the fabric for his lower jaw and pin it into place. Then we can super glue just the edges of the fabric down, leaving the back open. And now we cut all of our teeth down with the rotary tool. I originally calculated that we'd need 87 teeth for his outer mouth, and it could have been a good bit about the bite of 87, but we only ended up actually needing 81 of them. Adding on the 21 from earlier, Plush Trap has 102 teeth. We glue them into the lower jaw first, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I love the color differences between each tooth. I think it really brings it all together. Now we can glue them into the upper jaw. I ended up having to cut the very back teeth on the lower jaw shorter so that they'd fit in his mouth. The back hole on each side also had to get filled with foam clay. So we let that dry, sanded it down, did a few coats of Mod Podge, painted it black, and sealed it with more Mod Podge. There are a few bits of glue visible around the teeth, so I went in with my tiniest paintbrush to paint them black. The plastic around his upper jaw also gets painted black so it blends in. And it's finally time to attach the jaw. We start by gluing the fleece down to the side back sections. The fleece on the corresponding part of the head also gets cut and glued down. Then we put some glue on the underside of the lower jaw and glue it to the fabric mouth backing. The placement has to be perfect, and this was not easy to do with just two hands. Once the mouth backing is glued in, we glue the fleece on the underside of the jaw over it. Now we can super glue the sides of the mouth on, and that's our lower jaw attached. I know it doesn't look like much, but getting that jaw on was probably the most difficult part of the whole project. While we're gluing mouths in, let's glue in his endoskeleton mouth. This definitely caused some problems. I glued it in and it looked like everything was fine until he started eating without prompting. So Cubby has a sensor in his mouth and you can feed him. And the position I'd glued the endo mouth in was constantly triggering that sensor. He got stuck in an infinite eating glitch, but thankfully we could fix it by taking out the endo mouth and gluing it in slightly lower. And now he only eats if we press down on the sensor intentionally. I completely forgot to weather his legs earlier, so let's do that now. This is meant to look similar to the weathering on his arm segments, but they're made from two completely different types of foam. We use the hot knife to create some wear around his knees. Then we do a few coats of Mod Podge, brush on some silver paint, do a black wash, and seal it with Mod Podge. Now we can cover his legs with fleece. We use Glad Wrap and duct tape to get the pattern for the upper legs. This pattern is going to be two pieces, inner and outer leg. We need to cut two of each piece. The outer piece has a dart to make it fit the curve of the leg better. We machine sew up the darts and pin the pieces to Plush Trap. Now we ladder stitch them on. Plush Trap's face is a bit delicate because of his mouth, so I rested him on sushi cat to protect him while I sewed. Now we can do the same for the lower legs. We make our pattern, cut it out of fleece, and pin it on. Then we just ladder stitch it up. We glue the edges of the leg fabric into place so it doesn't shift or move around. I cut out the fabric over the holes in his paws and glued the excess down. This is to give the legs a groove to sit in so they're not just two flat pieces glued together. Whenever I use contact cement, I use pins to mark out where the glue can go to before it becomes visible. We put on some contact cement and glue the legs and paws together, with the paws being angled slightly outwards. My dear friend Spencer helped me by steadying plush trap during this. Thank you, Spencer. Now that his paws are on, let's go back to his arms. We make the pattern from glad wrap and clear tape, cut them out, and lattice stitch them on. Again, these have to be done individually because the wear on each arm is different. And then we just glue them into place. We are in the home stretch now. Plush trap looks a little bit silly without his nose, so let's work on that next. We cut the shape out of black fleece and pin it into place. It sits directly above where his old nose was, so the nose sensor still works. We hand sew up about three quarters of it and then put some stuffing in there. I wanted to install a squeaker, but none of my local craft stores had one that was small enough, and it might have disrupted the shape of the nose if it was too big. Once our stuffing is in, we finish hand sewing it up. The next thing we're gonna do is his hands. I made a pattern for his fingers from paper and a pattern for his palm. Plush Trap is sometimes shown with five fingers, but he has four fingers in FNAF 4, so that's what we're going with. We want his fingers to be able to bend, so we're gonna make an armature for each one. We start by cutting some aluminium wire down and folding it over, making it a fair bit longer than the finger it corresponds to. Then we can glue them on with contact cement. His fingers are about the same length as his palm. To secure the armatures so they don't break off, we glue a piece of craft foam over them. And now we take a quick break to fix up his endo mouth. It was a bit too distracting, so I heat formed it back a bit more and dry brushed on some black paint to darken it. And just a note about the endo mouth, a lot of people suggested that I could attach it to the lower jaw to have that move. And I did try to do that, but because the lower jaw is so big, it didn't move at all. And the endo mouth is supposed to be there, so I wanted to include it in this animatronic. I'm much happier with how it looks now. Okay, let's get back to the hands. We need to start covering his hands in fabric. We use glad wrap and duct tape to make our pattern, cut them out and ladder stitch them on, sewing around the finger armatures. Now we can make his fingers. We cut out four of each of our pattern pieces. Each finger is two pieces and we need two of each finger. Plush Trap's fingers are segmented into three pieces, so we're gonna machine sew a seam to make fake joints. And because we can, we machine sew the front and back of each finger together. We turn the fingers so they're the right way out and stuff them so they hold their shape. 
I pinned the fingers into place and something about them looked super off. My partner pointed out that the thumbs were in the wrong spot, so I moved the armature and it immediately looked so much better. I sewed the palms back up and started sewing the fingers on. I went around each finger twice because I wanted them to be really sturdy. I wasn't being very careful when hand sewing this because I was watching Sonic X and that had most of my attention. And sorry to be a bit gross, but I got myself pretty badly with the sewing needle and bled onto his left hand. It ends up covered with paint later on, but I know it's there and you know it's there. Plush Trap fell and bit me after he was complete and that drew blood too, but that's not the first time he got me. With his hands out of the way, the last big thing we have to do are his ears. Cubby's earpiece has paint on it, so we sand that back to rough up the surface. Then we pattern his ears. Each ear segment has wear in a different spot, so of course we need to include that. Weirdly enough, Plush Trap has three ear segments, while Springtrap and Bonnie both only have two. We cut them out of one millimeter thick craft foam. Each ear was gonna be two pieces of craft foam thick because I was worried about the ear mechanism not being able to move his ears if they were too heavy. Plush Trap's bunny ears are much bigger than Cubby's little bear ears. I went with two pieces for now, but it was a bit thin, so we fix it up later and I'll show you that when we get there. We also trace them onto paper so we have a pattern for the fabric. Like his fingers, we want to be able to position his ears. To do this, we're giving them an aluminium wire core. Each ear gets two pieces of wire that runs the length of the ear. We cut the wires and super glue them down, making sure there's a gap between the ear segments. Once that's dry, we use contact cement to glue the second layer of craft foam on top of the wire. Now we can cover them in fleece. We start by cutting out our pattern pieces from our main color, making them a fair bit bigger than the foam. Then we take the back pieces and super glue them onto the backs of the ears. I'm using super glue here because contact cement always seems to bleed through fleece and this particular brand of super glue doesn't. Now we need to mark where the inside of the ear is gonna be because that'll be done in our secondary color. We cut the middle section out of the front pieces and glue them down. You can see that they're a bit big, but I promise that that's a good thing. We use glad wrap and clear tape to pattern the inner ears. We cut the out and dapple on our brown fabric paint to match the eyelids and tummy. Then we can super glue them down to the middle of the ears. And now we need to trim down the edges. There needs to be just enough fabric to let us glue them together without any foam showing. We seal the edges with super glue very carefully, going section by section. Before we glue them on, we're gonna make him look gross. The ears, the rest of the animatronic, everything. My awesome housemate Joey mixed up two different shades of disgusting rot green and we're gonna dapple them on. And just making him look dirty took so long. In the time it took to do this, I watched 17 episodes of Sonic X, so it was about 8 hours. And that wasn't me just messing around, I wanted him done so I could show you guys. I might have done a bit too much, there really should be more yellow showing through. Once he was sufficiently gross, I super glued the ears on and then realized that the ear mechanism was more than strong enough to support them. So I ripped them off, pulled the backing fabric off, and added an extra 3 pieces of craft foam to each segment. I sanded the foam edges down to make sure they were even and glued the fleece edges shut to seal them again. Fleece has a bit of give to it and I was surprised that the original fleece still fit over the foam after we made it so much thicker. I thought we were gonna have to redo all of the fabric parts but it was completely fine. Then I glued the ears back on and he's done. Before I show you the finished results, here's a sneak peek at our next couple of projects. We're gonna make a little figure of Gangle from the Amazing Digital Circus. This is gonna be a super quick project so the video will be up in about a week. I'm also planning on making a Dread Ducky from Dark Deception and some Kwame from Miraculous Ladybug but I don't know what order or exactly when those are happening. And of course, we'll be making Santa Claus from Ed's World in time for Christmas. Our next FNAF project shouldn't be too far away, and that'll probably be a Freddle or the Cupcake. Haven't quite decided yet. Okay, here he is. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.